my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Garden Angel, intercede for me. When I ran my first Ironman race, which is a very long triathlon, my dad came over to cheer me on, but also to coach me, because he had already done four Ironmans himself, so he had quite a bit of experience. And he gave me a very good piece of advice. He told me, look, during the bike leg of the race, which is the second part of the race, and the longest part, because it's a 112 mile long uh, leg, he told me the best thing you can do is prepare a good sandwich. Like, forget about the gels and all these special, like, athlete food. Prepare yourself a good sandwich. Something you're going to be looking forward to. Because as you're running this race, and it's quite a long race, it took me 11 hours to complete the whole race, you're eating this gels and uh, very kind of fast energy foods, but they're pretty disgusting. And you're tired. It's a long race. You kind of want it to be over. And when you get to the halfway point, you still have five, six hours to go. So my dad told me, you need something that you look forward to. So you can kind of divide the race into them, have something very clear that is calling you. And at the midpoint of the bike race, you can actually leave stuff there. You have like a place where you can leave your bags or something. So I left a good sandwich and it changed everything. Because every mile, as I was getting tough, you were know, getting tired, I could think of that. It's like, you know what? In 20, 30 miles from now, I have a good sandwich waiting for me. And it was perfect, because when I got there, I stopped, got off the bike, sat down two minutes, not much more than that, ate my sandwich, enjoyed it, and then got back on the bike and kept racing. And it felt like starting a new race. So a super long race was divided and that something that was pulling me made it so much easier than the second half. Obviously, I was looking forward to the goal, right, to the finish line, which also made it very easy. But reading today's gospel, I think this is a little bit what my dad did for me, right? This piece of advice that he gave me. Jesus was doing the same thing with the apostles in a way without them knowing this. Jesus is showing himself to his apostles in his transfiguration. He takes with him Peter, James, and John, leads him up a high mountain, and there he was transfigured before them. And the gospel tells us his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And with Jesus appear Elijah, and Moses. And it must have been such an incredible scene to see Jesus transfigured. That Peter, not knowing what he was saying, says, Rabbi, it is good that we're here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, and let us just stay here. It was a little bit of a foretaste of heaven, seeing God But then the transfiguration is over. The scene ends. The disciples no longer could see anyone. And they just go back the mountain. And Jesus tells them, hey, don't say anything to anyone. This is for you guys. And then he tells them there is going to be much contradiction coming ahead, predicting his passion and death. 
And probably Jesus was trying to give them something to look forward to when things got rough. Because he knew things were going to get really rough when they crucified him, when they were left alone. Or at least they felt they were left alone. There were so many people persecuting them and so many difficulties. Maybe in the back of their minds they have this transfiguration and the way they have seen Jesus Christ, and that is reserved for us. If we stay faithful and we keep fighting and we give our lives for the church, as they all did, they will be able to see God once again in His glory. Not just for a few seconds, but for all eternity. And even though we don't have any thing to tell us that later on they actually look back into this scene, besides the fact that they wrote it down, which probably was enough for us to realize that they were actually thinking of that, now seeing things with perspective, maybe this image of Jesus Christ transfigured kept them going. And obviously we need to look for things that will help us keep going in our own spiritual life, in our own struggles, because there will be difficult moments. There will be moments of persecution, there will be moments of pain and suffering, and we're going to lose um, people that we love, and it's going to be hard sometimes to stay strong in our faith. Well, hopefully we have things that we can look back to, moments of joy, moments of great clarity, moments in which our faith was very present for us. So that when the difficult times come, we can go back to those memories and say, hey, remember how close we were to Jesus Christ in those moments. Remember how beautiful it was to live our faith, to go to Mass, to learn about Jesus Christ, how happy we were that we shared this faith with so many good people. Because that is going to help us keep going. Of course, then we have the finish line, right? Which is the big goal that helps us keep moving. Eternal life in heaven with God. But Jesus also promised us not only eternal life, but also a hundredfold here on earth. And when we experience those hundredfold, when we experience those beautiful moments that our faith gives us, which are many, let's treasure them. Let's keep them very much the center of our hearts so that we can go back to them when there are moments of doubt, when things get rough, so that it can keep us going. Like that sandwich kept me going in my race. And I'm grateful that I listened to my dad, as we always should do. Parents, many times, most of the time, are right. He was right in that opportunity. What keeps you going? What memories, what feelings have helped you in your life? Each one of us has different experiences. You have to talk to Jesus about this. You have to put those memories, those thoughts, those feelings at the center of your heart. And again, we don't do things for feeling. That's not what moves us, but it helps, obviously. And we feel good when we feel happy, when we feel fulfilled by Jesus Christ, by our faith, by the love of God that we have, that obviously is going to keep us going, and that helps a lot. So let's treasure those moments. Let's realize if that is how happy we feel here on earth, just imagine how happy you will be when you get to eternal life in heaven with God. That is when we will be able to make those tents and stay with Jesus forever. Lord, help us. Help us to keep going, no matter what, no matter how hard things can be, no matter how rough the road can get. We can always go back to that certainty that comes from our faith and belief in you who have revealed this to us. It's worth it. And those difficulties, those rough moments will pass and Jesus will come back and he will fill us with his grace here on earth, but then forever in heaven. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations 
that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Garden Angel, intercede for me.